Hello and welcome to my July wrap up. Last week I put out a video of me saying the name of every book on my shelves, also known as a bookshelf tour. Um, first one ever, took me a really long time to edit it. It's not even that much. I just, the editing for these, are, it's so minimal <laughs> that that, um, yeah, felt like a lot more. Uh, but yeah, if you wanna watch that, I'll link that down below. That was exciting. What else happened this month? I didn't really read that much. I went on holiday for a week that kind of threw me off. So I have six books to talk about, but I only actually read four books. Um, I suppose that's way more than the average person in a year, probably. So <laughs> I'm not gonna be too hard on myself, uh, but yes, let's get started. I put them over here. <laughs> The first book I read was for my book club, which is Americana by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. Um, we had lots of interesting discussions about um, like race in America and the immigrant experience and um, all that. I made a full video about this that I will also link below. I wasn't that enthralled by it, to be honest. As I went into it in my review, I feel like the um, Nigerian culture aspect of it interested me so much more than, than like being black in America um, because I don't know anywhere near as much about Nigeria as I know about being black in America. Um, but yeah, still a very good read. Next thing I read was a highly anticipated sequel. This is A Beautifully Foolish Endeavor, part two of An Absolutely Remarkable Thing by Hank Green. Um, I also made a full video about this one. Uh, again, it didn't thrill me, unfortunately. I had, I mean, I had a, obscene expectations for this. Um, I thought it was a fun romp, but I think the, the multiple narrators thing didn't work for me. I didn't find it very believable based on like they all sounded the same. Um, and like the whole plot seemed a bit um, sus suspiciously geared towards the subjects that Hank Green wanted to talk about rather than anything vaguely realistic. <laughs> but I did enjoy it um, and that's what matters. Then after that, I um I got this book called Saltwater. I will just read the blurb for you briefly. Lucy is transitioning from working class Sunderland to a London university is more overwhelming than she ever expected. And she works long shifts to make ends meet and navigates chaotic parties in East London warehouses and South Kensington mansions. She still feels like an outsider among her fellow students. When things come to a head, Lucy takes off for Ireland, piecing together family stories and trying to gain a sense of who she really is. I was like, that sounds like my perfect book because I read that blurb and then I realized I've never read a book about what it is to be young in London, really, especially about like moving to London for university is an experience that like I had that was very formative um, and actually like a really scary and horrible time of my life. And I really wanted to read from that perspective. And then also she like goes to Ireland, my boyfriend's Irish. I was like, that would be fun. Um, but but then I, I gave up on this book, page, what was it, 36, which is really rare for me. Usually I like will go until at least 50. Oh, the sun's come out. Nice for the people outside. Bad for my white balance. Um, but yeah, usually I would read further than that, but I just couldn't. I just, I knew I wasn't getting on with it. Um, so I gave up. It's very, uh, it's all in like little paragraphs. You can't even see them. And they're very... Um, sort of abstract. Let me read out one to you. How to make sense of soft shapes in the dark. The shiver of milk, cold hands on my face, hankering after softness, a pink jumper, the swell of a breast. I'm fluent in the language of your body, brown freckles in the roar of you, my dimpled knees, my fat, strange elbows. Very poetic. Oh my god, this white balance is so wrong. We'll, we'll just fix this. There we go. We're gonna have to go back down when the sun, when the sun leaves. Um, the, it's very poetic and very kind of lyrical, um, but there's also, it's a lot of kind of just like abstractly jumping through time. It feels like a self-aggrandizing diary where you think that you're really poetic. Um, <laughs> that's how it kind of read to me. I just felt like it was very close to my lived experience, but actually wasn't going to vibe with me. So I put it down and I was sad and that's enough of that. It does have a very pretty cover though, I have to admit. I think this is really nice. The next thing I picked up was when I was going on holiday to Cornwall. My family has um, a house by the seaside uh, and I picked up A Sting in the Tail by Dave Goulson. This came out in 2013. It was a year before another book of his that I've read, A Buzz in the Meadow. Dave Goulson is a biology professor um, and a naturalist and talks a lot about 
um, like rewilding and the bumblebees. Um, and yeah, and a buzz in the meadow was all about him buying this estate um, in the south of France and and conducting a lot of kind of like experiments on the land with trying to foster more wildlife and stuff. And this is more very explicitly about bees. Um, and it was really good. But because I was on holiday, I thought I'd, I always think I have so much time to read on holidays and I just don't. I was spending too much time, you know, drinking gin and tonics in the sun. Um, so I only got to page 26. Um, and then by the time I got back into London, I was like, this isn't the vibe for me right now. Like, I don't, I just, I don't think I'm going to be able to push through this. Um, so I'm going to put it down for now. But I, I really did like A Buzz in the Meadow. And I just know I'm going to read this at some point in the future. Just now wasn't its time. The next book I read was Supper Club by Lara Williams. This was the antidote I needed after Saltwater. It is also about a girl going to university. And then also in her late twenties meeting um, this girl who she strikes up a very intense friendship with and they start this supper club which is all about like really connecting with food and your body and like these women who have all been uh, like misused by men mostly um just like reclaiming their their selves and oh this hit all of the different spots for me i really really liked it a lot it wasn't the perfect form of the book um like i don't know the, the second this the the parts where she's talking when she's older she's 29 but i feel like at least four or five years worth of content goes into that time period and it doesn't actually really ever explain how that is resolved or like whether she starts at a certain age and finishes at a certain age or whether just her life happens very quickly in a short period of time. Um, but it was really terrific. A great book, much like um, The New Me is dealing with female rage in a very, very internalized way. This is dealing with female rage in a much more expressive way. Um, and I liked it a lot and I would implore you to watch my full video about it if you want to hear more about it. The last book I read this month was actually an audiobook, um, but I read this in its paperback form two years ago and I just wanted something like somewhat familiar with a nice voice I liked. Um, so this is Happy by Darren Brown, why more or less everything is absolutely fine. The reason these books are wonky here is that it lives on this shelf, it lives on my stoicism shelf, um, because it's broadly about philosophy. It talks about the history of happiness across loads of different schools of thought um, and then kind of circles back around and talks a lot about happiness as it relates to stoicism. It is very insightful, um, very witty. He clearly has such a good grounding on the history of thought and has thought about it a lot himself and then it also has this additional um, aspect of like Darren Brown if you don't know if you're like not from the UK he's a he's a famous magician um, in the UK magician mentalist illusionist like whatever very much like a household name but not someone you would see on like a red carpet but that means he's talking about um, happiness also as it relates to fame and as it relates to money but he can do that from the perspective of very personally being able to debug any of these ideas we have about like fame and money will make us happy. Um, and it also has a whole section at the end about death, um, which I love. I work at a, a death industry startup, yo. Um, so uh, death always on my mind, um, but about how to have a good death and people's regrets at the end of their life and stuff like that. Um, and I love it. It's really bloody long. It's like 500 pages long. Um, but it did make a terrific audiobook, so I would recommend it like that as well. If you want to know a bit more about stoicism, if you want more control over happiness in your life. The one thing that stuck with me that didn't the first time I read it, uh, was about like Danny Kahneman, um, who wrote, uh, Think Fast and Slow, is that it? His main thing is about the experiencing self versus the remembering self. So if you're making choices for the experiencing you, you're prioritizing that kind of like, short-term hedonism and the remembering self is more about like looking back on stuff and it, it kind of like made me realize especially during these coronavirus times i have not been doing a lot for my remembering self and i've been doing a lot for my experiencing self and that's fine because i think enjoying yourself in the moment is good um but it's pretty pretty boring and uh this yeah just hearing this again that's something i need to reevaluate in myself and maybe 
think a bit more about uh, things that I can do that will be more impactful on my life story than just like sitting in bed reading with a cup of tea, which is damn pleasant. So that has been my July. Um, let me know if you've read anything in July that particularly impacted you or that you think I should read. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I will see you in another one, I mean in a month's time, that's how this works, the monthly videos. <laughs> and as always you should check out charis.com because it's really cool, I made the homepage really nice the other day, I'm very proud of it. Okay, see you soon, bye!